So we do have a problem though. Hello and welcome back to Sage and Stone Homestead. My name is Heather. We are in the kidding stalls tonight in the barn because I have a Schwenli in labor. So she's one day overdue. We've got a chatty Kathy next door. This is Tempest. She had her babies yesterday. Her due date was today. So these two girls flip flop their due dates. And I did record her birth, but something got messed up with the audio. So at the end of this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about Tempest's birth. I am still gonna use some of the video portion. So it's kind of like a two for one today, which is pretty cool. So Shvenly's doing what Shvenly does in labor. This is her third time having babies and she's rocking back and forth on her back legs. You can really see that her tail is really sunken in. Her sides are really sunken in. And very classically of Shenley is when she does feel a contraction, she kind of tries to run, like she tries to escape. She gets kind of scared and skittish and starts jumping around a little bit. Um, once she settles into it, she'll be okay. But this is very typical of her. She is a seasoned mama. She knows what's going on. It's just kind of part of her process. And if you're a little bit newer to the channel and you don't know, Shvenny is my most skittish goat. And so I think if I were to be right up on her, loving on her and stuff, it would stress her out more. So I'm just here to, just in case she needs a little bit of help, maybe cleaning off some noses or something, but I'm gonna try really hard just to stay out of her way. Shvenly is bred to my purebred La Mancha Buck Hamish, and Shvenny herself is a Kiko Nubian. So you can see her long ears. I think they're technically airplane ears because they do stick out a little bit. Sometimes she can lay them down pretty well, but they're not quite pendulous like a classic Nubian. It's that Kiko in her that does that. The La Manchas have these little tiny, basically non-existent nubbin ears. And so I'm really interested to see what these kids look like. Every dog is barking. So we're at 1.45 in the morning. We started this at 9 p.m. and she had been eating and ruminating this whole time, but I really have not seen her chew her cud in about 45 minutes. Um, she also just kind of has this just wide-eyed, distant look about her, and I can't decide if it's just her really getting into the throes of flavor or if something is wrong. And one of the things that's making me think that something might be wrong is she really hasn't been getting up and shifting her weight at all. Everything seems to kind of have stopped, and f due to past experience, not with her, but with her best friend, Margie. Um, when this happened before, there was two kids trying to come out at once and it basically just stalled the labor. So I may have to check. She is not going to like it. The first thing I'm gonna do though is give her a little bit of red raspberry leaf tea um, and just seeing what that does. Mm -hmm. So the audio on the camera may sound a little bit different than it did last night. I'm having audio issues with my microphone, so I took it off. This is the stock microphone on my GoPro. So, Shvenny's over here still in labor. 
I did check her when I was down here earlier just to make sure that there wasn't like a positional problem that was making her labor not progress. It doesn't seem like it. Um, actually, it seems like she's only about this much open as far as her cervix goes. And really, it should be about fist size. So she does have a little ways to go. And I suspect that the coyote and dog noise last night really threw her off. Goats are prey animals and something like that can really get their adrenaline going and adrenaline can really kind of slow things down. So it should be much, much quieter today. She has been making her way around the kidding stall today, pawing the ground, and I'm just waiting to see some really strong contractions. I haven't exactly seen strong ones yet. All right, so it's been about an hour and a half since I noticed that she had a little bit of goo dripping from her back end and it looked like she'd be ready to push any minute. And it's been an hour and a half since she chewed her cud, which uh, usually when they're chewing their cud, it means all is well. And when they kind of stop that, uh, things may not be going so well on the inside. And I want to check for the cervical dilation and the position of the kids. And she knows what I'm going to do. She's, she's not gonna really like it, but if she would allow me to check her, I wouldn't have to put this harness on her, but she's not gonna really allow it, but I think she needs it. I know, I know, I know. water bag behind the cervix and it did pop with which was fine it has clear fluid in it and it seems like she maybe needs a little bit more dilation to go I'm guessing that she's not progressing quicker because maybe the kid isn't presenting ideally I did feel a hoof but no nose really uh, close to the hoof so I'm gonna give her a little while and see what happens yeah you can't eat this This water bag popped and I think I'm seeing little bits of meconium in it. So I need to keep that in mind. It's all right, they're not out yet. They're coming, they're coming. It's not out yet. Good job. Good job. Good job, Spinny. Good job. Good. Good job, Spinny. Buckling here. Well, he's actually kind of big. Okay, he's got more feet coming. Good job. Let me move him out of the way, okay? Move him out of the way. Two feet, good. Nose right behind. That one's coming nicely. Good job, Shvenny. Good 
that. Uh, good job. Good girl. Well, two beautiful buckling outer spinny. I bumped her and I thought maybe there was a third baby in there, but I don't think so. It's not bony. So I'm gonna guess that what I'm feeling in there is either her rumen or probably her placenta. So cute. You need milk. <laughs> A little lower. A little lower. Good job. <laughs> These kids are the size of feral. <laughs> as far as like height. I don't have an udder. She's over there. Look, your brother's getting it laying down. <laughs> Tempest is gonna be a little bit loud. I sold her doling this morning as a bottle baby and so she hears these cries and thinks that it's her daughter, but it's not. That's not your baby, honey. He's over here. So this is one of Tempest's babies that she had two days ago. Tempest is a first freshener, and when I recorded the video, I got audio, but it's not good audio. So I'm gonna just tell you about her birth and how it went here, and it went really well. So both Schwenli and Tempest, their first kid was coming out with one hoof and their head with one leg back. It's not the most ideal position, but it's not the worst. It just kind of adds a little bit of width to the body and just makes it harder to pass. It's not as streamlined as being two feet forward with the uh, face being real close behind. So his little sister was, you know, like, like this, like this. <laughs> And same thing with the first baby that Schwenli had today. But both mamas handled it really well, according to my book. The best way to help in that situation is to apply pressure to the leg that's out and to almost use two fingers on the side of the head as leverage to help guide the baby out. One of the issues that can happen when the arm or the leg is back like that is the mom will make some progress with pushing, but because there's this bulk back here with the shoulder, it almost will go back in reverse and all of the work will be for nothing. So if you can kind of just hold the mom's progress as she pushes, it helps get the babies out really, really well. So Tempest delivered her babies beautifully. She actually labored really well too. Tempest, she's the one you can hear in the background. She's really vocal to begin with. But two days ago, she was really, really vocal. And um, she ate, she had detectable ligaments up until she delivered, and her udder wasn't super, super hard. So I have had goats deliver with their ligaments being able to be felt more than one time. Um, I don't know how or why, but they do. You would never know that she was a first freshener. She loved them and licked them off straight away and she nursed them really well. And she's also a pro on the milk stand. I like to milk my girls from day one. So they'll have their first 24 hours with their babies. And then I will milk alongside babies for the next two weeks. So the babies are with mama for the full 24 hours. 
around the clock for two weeks and I'm also milking alongside, just trying to keep up with the supply and keeping my hands on the doe's udder really helps me keep a close eye on her and assess her health after the delivery. When I have the hands on the udder, I can really feel if there's any temperature changes. I can really feel if there's anything going on with the consistency of the milk that might really lead me to believe that there's some mastitis going on. I just think it's a really good idea to keep hands on the udder. Even if I'm not getting a whole ton of milk, it's still worth doing and it helps develop that habit for them. So we do have a problem though. These are our first Odie babies. And Odie is one of my Nigerian dwarf bucks that I kept out of Pepper last November. So he's a little bit over one year old and this is our first time getting to use him as one of our herd sires, but we can't keep Odie, unfortunately. Odie has two teats, but his mom, Pepper, She's got two teats as well, but one of her teats has a spur teat on it. It's like this little nubbin on the side of her udder or the side of her teat that doesn't cause any issues. But Pepper herself has babies that oftentimes they've got three and four teats and that's not ideal in the dairy world. It's okay for something like a meat goat, but with dairy goats, the udder is really the main focus and you want it to be as, as nice as possible and it is considered a flaw. So I don't necessarily mind the multiple teats here, but I am working towards having a better quality herd. And so I can't keep Odie. I have to call Odie out of the herd. He has bred two other girls that haven't given birth yet. Margie, who is due next March 17th, and Boba, who is due, I think, in May. So all of those kids either have to be kept back as meat goats, sold as pets, or like what happened with his sister. As long as the buyer is comfortable and knows about the three teat situation and they don't mind, I'm willing to sell them at half price. And that's what happened to his sister. She went to a really nice family this morning and they look forward to using her as a milk goat. She has two teats. As far as I can tell, this little dude has four. It's, let's show him your teat teat. I know. We so it might be a little hard to tell, but the two teats are fused together. There's one, two on that side, and one, two on this side. Not ideal to keep for uh, a breeding buck at all. So he's actually gonna be weathered. We're gonna castrate him when he's eight weeks old, and we're gonna keep him. We are actually going to use him to replace Tumnus. Tumnus is our current resident weather, and a weather is a castrated male goat. We've had Tumnus for three years. Tumnus for some reason, all of a sudden has a mean streak. And as a companion animal, it's the reason I keep a weather on the homestead as a companion animal for anyone who may need a companion. Right now he's with Odie. Uh, as a companion animal, he can't be a jerk. And he's got nice big horns and he'll use them. And even without horns, I have seen him pick up a doe by her ear and throw her. So he is going to be turned into jerky. And this little guy is gonna be his replacement. We are having a super hard time naming him. I do have a chaos theme for my dairy goats. We've got a Havoc, we've got a Calamity, we've got a Mayhem and a Pesky. And I've got a few other names that I'm holding secret until the perfect goats come along for them. But it doesn't necessarily have to be a chaos theme. What do you think he should be named? Look at his little frosty ears. Aren't those cute? You gonna go back with mama? Yeah. <laughs>